color coordinates. In calculating the double integrals and eventually learning how to uh, calculate the triple integrals, sometimes we need to apply different techniques. Sometimes we have the region over which we are taking the integral and it's in the form of a circular region. So in general, if you have a double integral over region R, a function f of x and y dA, and that the region R is circular region or part of a circular region, then we are interested in applying polar coordinates. Well, in that case, if you have a circular region, we're going to change the variable, change the variables, x becomes r cosine theta, and y becomes r sine theta. Well, what is r? r squared, as you remember, is defined as x squared plus y squared. Depending on the behavior of the region that you're working with, you're going to have different values for your theta. For example, if it's complete circle, if you have a circular region with a complete rotation, then your theta is bounded between zero and two pi. However, if you have a different circular region, if it's in the shape of upper half, circle, then your theta is bounded between zero to pi. And if it's, for example, in the first and fourth quadrants, if it's of this form, then your theta range between negative pi over two to pi over two. So depending on the region that you're working with, you have change in your theta and also your r. Very good. It happens that when you're converting your variables into polar form, you're going to make some adjustments to dA. In that case, dA becomes r the r d theta. So this is an important note. Usually students forget to add r when they change dx dy from rectangular coordinate system into polar coordinate system adding r. Let's go over a couple of examples to feel more comfortable about how to apply this method which is very helpful in calculating the double integral when you have a circular region. The base is in the form of a circular region. So let's write this summary up here and then go over a couple of examples. X is R cosine theta, y is r sine theta, and r squared is x squared plus y squared. And we saw that theta varies between different angles, and dA becomes r dr d theta. Sometimes you have to switch between these orders. For example, let's take a look at this example. Question says, well, Evaluate the following integral. We have the double integral of 3x plus 4y squared dA over region R. And the region R is upper half plane.
bounded by the following circles. X squared plus Y squared equals to one, and also X squared plus Y squared equals to four. Very good. So what's the base look like? Graph it. What's the graph like? If you just want to graph these two circles, you have a circle with radius one and you have a circle with radius two. So take a look. The inner circle with radius one and the outer circle with radius two. Very good. So the question says upper half. Upper half, it means that we just ignore this part of these two circles. Okay, very good. So as you can see, your R is in between one and two, the radius changing between one and two, and theta is bounded between zero and pi. Okay, let's do the conversion. Wherever we see x, we're going to write down r cosine theta. Wherever we see y, we're going to write r sine theta. And these are the changes, these are the adjustments that we're going to have for the boundaries. And since you have fixed boundaries, you can just take the integral with respect to r or with respect to theta and remember to make the adjustments as well. So here you get the integral theta zero to pi, the integral r one to two, and you have three r cosine theta plus four r sine theta to the second and dA, which is r dr d theta. There we go. We have the integral zero to pi, integral one to two, this is for our theta, this is for our r. And here, if you simplify this, you get three r squared cosine theta, I just distribute r into parentheses plus four. You already have r squared multiplied by r, you get r cubed sine squared theta dr d theta. So what I did, I distributed r into parentheses. Very good. So let's take the integral with respect to r first, then we're going to take the integral with respect to theta. This guy becomes the integral zero to pi, and here you have three r cubed divided by three, or just r cubed cosine theta plus r to the fourth sine squared theta, and r ranges between one to two d theta. Let's do the substitution, see what do we have? Zero to pi, and here we have eight cosine theta, plus 16 sine squared theta minus cosine theta minus sine squared theta d theta. Let's simplify this, combine like terms. Here you have zero to pi. Here you get seven cosine theta. And here we have 15 sine squared theta d theta. Very good. Remember that taking the integral of our cosine is easy, but here you have sine to the second. We have to make a little bit of adjustment here. Otherwise, we cannot take directly take the integral of sine squared. 
recall that sine squared is equal to one minus cosine two theta divided by two. We're going to replace this guy here. This becomes integral to zero to pi, seven cosine theta plus 15 divided by two, parenthesis one minus cosine two theta to the second power d theta. Very good. This is equal to the integral zero to pi, seven cosine theta plus 15 over two, so this guy becomes one minus two cosine two theta. And let me see, we don't have any exponent two, sorry about that. Let's just write this down and take the integral directly. Perfect. So here we have seven sine theta and we have plus 15 over two theta and we have the integral of so it's the integral here, the integral of cosine two theta d theta, which becomes a half sine two theta. So we get negative 15 over four sine two theta and theta is in between zero and pi. Very good. So let us do the substitution here. This guy becomes, seven sine pi plus 15 over two times pi minus 15 over four sine two pi, this is just zero, this guy is zero, minus if you plug in zero everywhere, it's going to be zero. So the answer is 15 pi over two. This double integral over the following region is 15 pi over two. 